Hi everyone, my name is Gordon Smith. I'm the product manager for Oracle REST Data Services at Oracle. Welcome to part two of the quick two-part uh, quick brief series on ORDS and the new SQL JSON database functions. So um, uh, to repeat what I said last time, uh, Oracle introduced major new JSON functionality in Oracle Database 12C, which is the latest release of the database. And this includes uh, new SQL JSON functions that are, are just really, really useful for using ORDS. So I've um, uh, talked about this in, in two parts. The first part uh, talked about mapping nested JSON objects to from multiple tables. So, so this is all about using JSON to exchange data between your application client application and the database going back and forth, particularly when the data is nested. And I went through an example of purchase orders where each purchase order had an array in it or a child table in relational terms of, of purchase order items. So we'd have multiple rows in that for each row in the purchase order table. And how you can use these functions to do the mapping, uh, to do an insert, to, and to generate the, the, uh, using queries. So this uh, quick brief is about something, another use, which is storing JSON in the database. And um, so this is, there's a couple reasons for doing this. One is performance in some cases, uh, you can eliminate the need to join what is called what I refer to as belongs to data um, over and over, over again. I'll be going in, in next slides in detail on that. And then the other uh, driver for this is agile development. So this uh, allows small teams, small development teams to operate more independently uh, with frequent iterative releases of, of application components. Very importantly, really key to this, without risking disruption of the overall production enterprise apps. And again, I'll try to go in more detail in that in, in the coming upcoming slides. The first performance. So the idea here is that some data, some child data for parent tables, just belongs to the parent table. That is, every time you want to access a row in a parent table, you're going to want, the application is going to want the child row. Um, it, so it's every time, uh, or pretty darn close to that. So relational experience has taught us that uh, it, it really makes sense to store child data in separate tables. You can do tricks with denormalization to try to stuff it into the parent table, but in the long run, you're going to pay when you do pay for that when you do that, and it's better just to store it as a separate table. Particularly, you have, in fact, in relational, you have to do it if there's a one-to-many relationship or just extremely onerous to try to do it and, and to do denormalization, but you really need to have another table. But if the, if the data, child data, is, is really belongs to data that every time you're going to access the, the parent, you're going to be doing the join to pull up all these child records as well, um, it, it uh, can be a big performance hit. And, and NoSQL vendors uh, criticize relational vendors for this. So they're, they're, they're saying, uh, that relational databases assemble and disassemble belongs to data over and over and over again. So with many enterprise apps where you have thousands of different tables and thousands of scenarios where you have child data like this, it, it, it probably does make sense to put it just as a child table. It doesn't really matter, but for some huge internet applications, which the NoSQL vendors uh, try to address, uh, they tend not to have complicated relational schemas with thousands or tens of thousands of tables. They're much simpler. They tend to be hierarchical. And if and, it, and the key about this is the volume is enormous. So you're doing this millions and billions of times. So if you're doing the join millions and billions of times over and over again, it, it can make a lot of sense to just incorporate the belongs to data uh, into the parent, parent record. And with JSON, you can do that by having a JSON column in the database that stores, that has an array of the child data right in the column in the parent table. Um, the next motive for doing this is agile development. So again, over decades of relational experience, we've all learned that schema changes for large, complex enterprise apps on relational databases need to be carefully controlled. There's just no way around it, that you can get into serious, serious trouble if you don't do this. 
So you can't, cannot set it up so that each of your development teams for this large app uh, has the ability to execute, make schema changes, to execute DDL. Uh, it, this, the, 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 the schema changes done by one team just tend to impact another team, and, and, it, and it can cause great havoc if, uh, if the uh, DDL changes are not coordinated carefully. So that's, everyone does that, that has been successful in building enterprise applications. Um, but over the last decade or so, new agile development te te techniques have emerged that have been very successful. They've enabled small development teams to operate more independently, uh, to release much more frequently in, in, in weeks, typically, as opposed to many months or many years with typical enterprise relational apps where there's just really no choice but to use a more waterfall approach where you have releases you know, every year and extensive testing of all the changes together and so on. So what I'm talking about here is using JSON columns to enable agile development techniques for some self-contained components of larger enterprise apps. I'm not advocating that this is a, a panacea to allow you to take the whole enterprise apps and, and use agile development techniques. It's just for certain select components. So what this allows you to do, defining JSON columns in your relational schema, is be able to give an app, an app development team scratch columns where they can put anything they'd like to um, into. Uh, it's Great now that we have JSON because it's rather than trying to stuff data into strings and try to coordinate what the, what's the different string formats mean, you now have JSON, a nice, well understood, simple standard that everyone can work with uh, to be able to store lots of different data in different structures. And very importantly, allow them to evolve those structures by changing the JSON. And um, they can do that independently. You don't have to give them DDL capabilities at all. They just have the ability, you just need to give them the ability to, um, uh, to get and put JSON into that column. So I'm going to give an example here of, of doing this, and that we're going to add a, um, uh, a uh, credit status JSON column to a customer table. So uh, the key thing about this the data in this uh, column is that it identifies whether a customer's credit is on hold or not. And this is important because it, it impacts everything. And so uh, it, no new orders can be accepted if there's a credit hold. And it really impacts all interactions with the customer. So it, this probably is a good case for belo being belongs to data, that every time you pull up a customer record, you should probably get this information about their credit status. Um, you may want to start with just having whether the, with the, the credit status is on hold or not, but then over time you might want to add more data. So for example, you might want to add an array, a JSON array that records the notes on the history uh, that led up to the hold. Uh, so for example, I have here um, credit, uh, customer credit status JSON document that says the status that on the top uh, of the document, and it's, in this particular case there is a hold, and then we have notes that show that in February 13th that um, Art Blanc uh, put a note in there that, that their credit score for this customer dropped to 400, and then the next day the, um, Robert Bloom, I'm not sure where I got these names exact, exactly, this decided that, oh, we better put them on hold because that's a, that's a low score. Um, so that, I'm, I'm making this up, but you can then add whatever additional information, and certainly over time this will evolve. But the key thing is that the development team can make changes to this JSON independently of everybody else and without impacting anything else. The only thing that really impacts other people is this top level name value pair of the status, uh, which is kind of the bottom line. Do they have a hold or not? So this can be set up using REST, so you would create a REST API that allows this development team to get and put this JSON content to and from this column. Uh, again, they have no ability to execute SQL DDL to change the relational schema. Um, JSON can be stored in, uh, in Oracle Database 12C in a VARCAR column, which is a, a good performant way of storing it, or in a LOB if you have uh, a large uh, JSON uh, document. 
uh, a nice thing that happened in 12C is that um, uh, VAR car length was increased to 32K. So that's a pretty sizable amount of data. And for a lot of these applications that I'm talking about here where it's just a component of an overall application, 32K may be just fine and all you need. One of the SQL JSON functions that was introduced in 12C, which is particularly useful here, is the isJSON constraint. So when you define this column to hold the JSON for the credit status, you can put the, uh, a constraint on this called isJSON. And then what that means is every time you do an insert uh, or, or a modif an update to that column, it checks to make sure that the structure of the, the, the JSON is sound, that you haven't corrupted the, the JSON structure. It's a legitimate JSON. Another capability that's in 12C, uh, JSON capability, is the ability to access uh, the JSON data using a dot notation in things like select statements. So we have here a select from the customer table, and we're pulling different columns that we're interested in, the customer name, whatever else. And one of the columns that we're interested in is this credit status. And in particular, we want to know the, the, this um, name value pair value on top of the, of the name is the status. So we want to know, is there a hold or not on customers? And we can just do that as part of our select statement using the stop notation in 12C. So that's a, a, a powerful way of doing it, storing JSON in a column. Another way of doing it in 12C is to use the um, Oracle Database 12C JSON document store and use a, uh, the SOTA protocol, which stands for Simple Oracle Document Access. So what this does is it stores, um, it, it's for, it supports development of apps that use JSON for all their data. Uh, it like some NoSQL data stores do. So it allows you to develop applications that you might think of doing with a NoSQL database, but do that in Oracle Database 12C. So it, it implements the JSON document store by storing JSON in a separate table. So it's not um, a column within your, your relational data. It's a separate table that stores these JSON documents. It provides advanced functionality. For example, there's a query by example filter capability. So you can uh, uh, execute simple predicates on this um, column like you do in SQL, but it, it's the predicates are written in a, in a JSON format using a query by example um, uh, kind of capability that allows you to do check numbers and characters and dates and things like that, well, you know, equals and greater than or less than and do ands and ors and um, you can do sorts and you know, pretty the basic things, but a pretty powerful set of capabilities. Another very important capability is that the data stored as JSON documents in the JSON document store can be joined with relational data for um, analytic purposes. And so this is a, is a different technology, different approach, it's different use cases, it is probably best when agile development is the primary goal. Again, you're, you're trying to develop an application where all your data is stored in JSON. You want to use JSON to allow agile development for the whole application. Um, and, and also where SOTA data is self-contained, it doesn't belong to other relational data. You may want to do joints with it for analytical purposes, but for operational purposes, it, it typically doesn't belong to the relational data. So hopefully that gave you a flavor of uh, uh, this use case that's now possible in Oracle Database 12C. For more information on what I've been talking about, I have a couple blog posts that you can go to. The first covers why you should store JSON in your relational schemas. It talks about these two use cases, storing JSON as a column in relational data and storing JSON separately in the JSON uh, document store in Oracle Database 12C. And why you want to do that, the benefits of it, or the goals for doing that. And then I have a worked example of the, the use case of storing JSON as a column in your relational schema using this um, credit status column example I talked about before, but here I give all the details about how you would uh, add this column with the is JSON constraints, how you would create a resource uh, and the uh, get and put um, APIs using ORDs, um, 
uh, what the handlers would look like. I give you the, the code that does this, and so you can just copy that and try it out uh, on your own as well. To find these, find my blog, it's pretty easy. You can Google it any number of ways, but I know that Gordon Smith Oracle blog works, and New Generation Database Access blog works, and other works as well. Um, you, also, if you're interested in uh, my blog and, and, and following that, uh, I recommend following me on Twitter because I use Twitter to announce uh, new blog posts that I do. And here's my, um, my Twitter um, account, um, and you can um, follow me on that. So hopefully this is uh, useful information for you. I think it's really exciting, all this stuff that is in Oracle Database 12 Seed to support JSON much better. And I hope you get good use out of that. Okay, thanks.